Are you good? Okay. So, so at this point, um, just so you know, we want to welcome those who are going to be watching the service for um, online via our YouTube, our YouTube channel. So we're glad that you can join us in that way. Um, at this time, we're going to um, have our next tip. Kathy. Yes, good morning. Our next uh, hymn of praise is Wonderful Words of Life.
As you saw at the beginning, they held up their signs with the problems, the issues that they're dealing with. You also saw the power of the Word of God in solving those problems. We read in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12, For the Word of God is quick and powerful, and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing and sunder of soul and spirit, and the joints and marrow, is the discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. We as Gideons have the honor and the responsibility of distributing God's word in the highways and byways of life. To paraphrase Paul's words to the Corinthian church, as Gideons we plant the seed. As the church and as individuals you water that seed, but ultimately God gives the increase. God through the working of the Holy Spirit brings men and women, boys and girls, the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. The scripture that I'd like to share with you this morning is Paul's letter to Timothy, second letter, chapter 3, verses 14 to 17, where he describes the word of God to Timothy and to us. But you must continue in things which you have learned and been assured of, known from whom you have learned them, and from childhood you have known the holy scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith, which is in Jesus Christ. All scriptures given by inspiration of God, and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. The Gideons International is an association of Christian business and professional men and their wives whose only purpose is to bring men and women, boys and girls, to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. This is accomplished in three ways. First, by the association of Christian business and professional men for service, by personal testimony and personal work by individual Gideons, by placing the Bible, God's holy word, or portions thereof, in hotels, hospitals, schools, institutions, and also the distribution of same for personal use. As you saw in the video, you are partners with us in helping to reach the lost of this world for Jesus Christ. Presently, there are almost 320,000 Gideon and Auxiliary members in 200 countries, territories, and possessions worldwide. Our key verse is Isaiah chapter 55, verse 11. 
so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but shall accomplish that which I please, it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent. This past year we were, were handicapped with the virus. We weren't able to do as many distributions as we normally do. But praise God, this past year just under 66 million copies of God's Word were given out, in most cases one at a time. That averages out to about two seconds as you saw in the video. Every time your heart beats somewhere in the world, two scriptures are being distributed. I'd like to share some personal test some testimony, individual lives that have been affected as a result of the giving place scripture. Mary Kay Beard was a notorious bank robber and safe cracker. She was finally arrested, convicted, and sentenced to a, a jail in Alabama. While she was there, uh, one, one day the Gideons and the auxiliary came and, and gave her one of these, the Bible, and she didn't want it, so she put it under her mattress and forgot about it. Well, sometime later, she remembered that Bible and opened it up and started reading. And the Lord spoke to her through a all books of the Bible, Ezekiel. Ezekiel chapter 36 talks about taking a heart of stone and replacing it with a, with a soft heart of flesh. Well, that spoke to Mary Kay. So then she knelt down on the cold cement floor of her cell and asked Jesus Christ into her life and Christ came in and saved her. As she was still in prison, she looked around and saw the distress that the women inmates were having that had families, especially around the holidays. This, this bothered her and, and she was led to start Angel Tree Ministries. And some of you may have heard of it. And it provides presence to the children of inmates in prison. Also, um, part, part of our ministry is, is distributing testaments to people we meet at, at the restaurants, anywhere in the highways of life. Maria and her husband and her daughter are in a park enjoying a beautiful day, maybe like today. They noticed a man, an older man, coming down, passing out these testaments. Came to Marie and offered her one and said, I want you to know God loves you and God will take care of you. Everything's going to be okay. Well, Maria took it and put it away. And at the end of the day, they were heading home and they got a phone call that their son had been shot. They raced to the hospital and found out from the doctors that their son had indeed been shot and they didn't think he would make it through the night. In fact, he only had a 25% chance of living. Well, they went to the chapel and sat there and they weren't very religious people at, at the time, but Maria remembered this testament and they got it out and started reading and it gave them comfort and peace through that long night in the hospital. Well, as it turned out, their son did survive. And according to police results, the reports, at the exact time that the Gideon handed Maria the Testament was the time when their son was shot. A coincidence? We as Gideons don't believe in them. We, we call them divine appointments. And it's Maria had a divine appointment with a copy of God's Word. Well, since then, uh, Maria and her family have read God's Word and have come to know Christ as Lord and Savior and are involved in ministry in the city. My purpose for being here today is to ask for your support, continued support of the Gideon ministry. There's three ways in which you can support us. First of all is through prayer. Prayer is very important. We don't accomplish very much in the ministry without prayer. If this was a normal day, free of COVID, I'd say, Ask you to pray for the blitz that's taking place in Pittsburgh this week. Of course, with the uh, the blitz, that's not happening. So much of our ministry is not happening. I'd like you to pray for our leaders at headquarters and international, and also for our state leadership as they somehow 
try to figure out how to keep the ministry going. I mentioned we distributed 66 million copies of God's Word last year. That may sound like a lot, but normally, as you saw in the video also, we usually have close to 90 million, which is almost three copies of God's Word a second. Well, we praise God for the 66 million lives that were touched as a result. And we ask for your prayer for, for our leaders to, to, to figure out how to continue to reach the laws for Christ in these very difficult times. Second way is by becoming a member of the Gideons International. We're looking for men who have a passion to reach the laws for Christ. So I mentioned that that's one of our, our uh, objectives, that way, ways we meet our objective is associating together. For me, that's that's very important. I've, I've met men and women from across the state, solid Christian men and women that I never would have been able, been, been able to meet had it not been for membership in the Giddings International. So if there are any men out there the least bit interested, you can talk to me afterwards. For those that, that don't feel called to this ministry but still would like to reach the lost, we have a program called Friends of the Gideons. This is open to anybody, male, females, pastors, anybody that has a desire to reach the lost for Christ. We have prayer partners asking and giving you information on what to pray for. We also have financial partners. As a financial partner, you, you pledge to uh, donate funds to the ministry every month. And as a result, you can buy testaments similar to what we hand out. They don't have the emblem on, they don't have um, information about the Gideons, but they have a plan of salvation and a help section like our testaments. Many churches ask us if they can, we can get them scriptures to take on mission trips, both here in the States and overseas. And we can't give them what we have, but if, if you uh, are so inclined and, and become a friend of the Gideon, you can buy as many as you like. So that's one way you can reach the laws for Christ and, and not be a member, but still be able to share God's word. I noticed on your, your Gideon card display, you have Bible app cards. That's another way for you to witness to someone if you have a smartphone. You can come up, go up to someone that speaks a different language. The Bible app has over a thousand different languages. You can bring up a certain language, type in a certain scripture like John 3.16, press a button, and it will read that to them in their native language. Third way of helping is uh, financial offerings, gifts. There's two ways you can help financially. The first is the Gideon Card Bible Program. There's a display with cards out there. They're, they're free. Three people are blessed as a result of using this card program. First of all, the person you send it to, they may have lost a loved one or a friend or someone close. They may be sick, going through times of, of difficulty. Just knowing that someone cares about them is a blessing to them. You as a sender will be blessed knowing that you've reached out to someone in need. And you also provided funds to purchase scriptures. Probably the most important person blessed is the person that will receive a copy of God's Word as a result of your generosity and providing funds and buying for, through that card. Second way is, is by offering. There's a, there's a basket in the back of our Gideons. You, you can give your offering to the ministry on your way out this morning. For an investment of about $1.20, you can provide the costs, all the costs of getting a copy of God's Word into the hands of someone overseas. This includes all the costs of, of printing it and shipping it. So whatever you give is used in its entirety to get scriptures out. None of it is used for overhead for the ministry. Because as Gideons and Auxiliary, we pay dues, and our dues offsets that overhead expense at our headquarters. So thus we can tell you that everything you give will be used to get a scripture out. Also on your way out, uh, you'll be given a, an insert. There's an envelope 
attached with the address of the local Gideons. If you'd rather go home and write out a check, you can just put the put your check in the envelope. And there's also a place on there where if you have a smartphone, you can use that to donate through your smartphone. You may say, well, I can only give a dollar and twenty cents. What impact can a dollar and twenty cents have? What impact can one testament have? Heriberto was a Roman Catholic altar boy in the Philippines. He received a copy of God's Word at school, read it, and became a Christian. He later went to Bible school and became a pastor in the Philippines. Then he offered God a simple prayer. He asked that all five of his sons would become pastors in the Philippines. Our God doesn't work in addition. He works in multiplication. Not only did all five of his sons become pastors in the Philippines, all 15 of their sons became pastors as well. God used that family in that one testament to start over 500 churches. If you have an opportunity today to reach out and to save a life for eternity, to provide one of these to a young person overseas, family too poor to afford a copy of God's Word, in some of the, most of the schools, this is what they use for a textbook. Can you imagine giving a better gift, better book to a young person than the one to tell them about Jesus? Today you have the opportunity and the privilege of helping to reach someone for eternity. That's the end of my presentation, but it's not the end of the story.
Thank you, Pastor, for allowing me to come and speak to your congregation. 